I want to start out by introducing our work with a couple of uh, recent mural projects that we've done this year. So this one here was in a very impoverished rural community called Sharon in Pennsylvania. And so we were working with some kids who were just really fun kids. They had a, a pretty difficult situation. They don't have a lot of resources. And we got together, um, this is through a series of programs we've done uh, in collaboration with Radisson Hotels, and had a lot of fun together and explored what they want to say to the world. And when you look at the details of this mural, you have a young person, a young woman, who's looking through this telescope into space and into the future. And you see she's in these, these turbulent seas. And all the different details within this piece, the youth came up with themselves. So they came up with a big idea and all of the small details. And I just love seeing what they come up with. I love seeing that they have these, these sea creatures and there's like this dog flying on some balloons into space and there's this giant eyeball and you know all these things that they come up with I get such a kick out of and so this is I think this is one of the signatures of Art Illusion is that our murals are not just paint by number this is something where kids of all ages community members can come up later and say I did that and this is what it means to me and this is why I did that so we have kids like Magic Mike who's a high school student, who's such an interesting kid. And I love this guy. And he's, and he's not an athlete. He's not the popular kid at school. Um, he, he has a lot of trouble at home. But he's like, as an adult, he's like your favorite kid because he's like the most interesting and the most unique. And when you have a kid like Magic Mike, that's what everybody calls him, um, and he participates in this project, and suddenly he's being interviewed by the local news and he sees himself on the news that evening. Imagine the feeling that he feels. And when these kids see themselves on the front page of their local newspaper, for once in their whole life, people are paying attention to what they have to say. And that's such a special feeling. And then the project ends, and the whole community comes out, and they walk in front of them as they cheer, and people get up, and the mayor, and all these people are coming up and saying what an amazing job they did, and they love their work. Imagine that feeling for these kids. Another thing that I love about this work is that it brings together all kinds of different people. This was in Stuttgart, Germany this year. And as you know, Germany has had a huge influx of refugees and immigrants, and we brought together kids from many different countries. Here's some of them in front of the mural here, from Gambia, from Iran, from Syria, Afghanistan, from Ghana, from, uh, from Dominican Republic, and local German kids who are also going through a lot of their own struggles. And we created a mural that they came up with this idea of going through an entire journey. And so you see the full mural here. There's a, a road that goes through the whole thing. And it goes from the past, which, which we depicted in these kind of blues and purples and dark tones. And when you get close, you see these images of what these kids have gone through and how they express that, their pain and the trauma of, of loss. And I just always, you know, I was just so moved by some of the images that they created to, to represent their story. You have Tamim, who painted in Afghanistan the, the Kabul airport, because he said, you know, this is the plane. He said, this plane here, this was me leaving two years ago, Afghanistan. It's the last time I saw my homeland. And, I, and I'm in this strange country, and I'm, you know, with this, this different language. And so that was the last time I felt comfortable and that I felt that I was in my place. So I wanted to pick that in the mural. And then Lamine uh, from Gambia, he had the idea that we all painted this, this car, uh, this, this truck with people coming out of the back. He said, that's when I fled Gambia. We went across the desert in a car, and there were all these people in the back, and I was one of those people. And so that's a big part of my story, and it represents the journey of all of us. And then as you move across the mural, it starts to get more positive, and we started to paint about, well, what are some of the things that keep you on the right track and keep you going towards a more positive future? And you have Annika, who's one of our German students, 
who painted a family because that's what she sees, something that she's working towards in her life. And you have Yari from the Dominican Republic painting the Eiffel Tower and Big Ben because she wants to travel the world. She wants to go to different places. That's her dream. You have Darir, who is, a, is Kurdish from Syria, and he helped some of the other, ki other young people to create this tree that has a city in it, a city of the future, in which they envisioned their own community as they would see it in the future in a more ideal situation. And so this is the power of public art that you can use it to both reflect on some of the really difficult things, but also to envision your dreams for the future that you want to work towards making come true. And within this mural, we have a baby because we said that can be something that represents the future. And I said, you know what, I know, I know a good model for this baby. <laughs> My wife and I just had a baby a few weeks ago. This is back in September. She had been born in August. And so her name is Amara. And so this was the picture of her. So at, at two weeks old, she became a star of this mural here. And um, so Amara's grown a lot since this time, earlier this year. And she's actually chosen her, her career path now. <laughs> she decided. She's going to also be an artist like her father. And she's here tonight, so if you guys want to talk to her about her, her new career, she's back there. <laughs> now, in Bucharest, Romania, we worked with an amazing group of young people who had lived on the streets, and many of them continue to live in the streets and in abandoned buildings, but they used the circus arts through an organization there to uplift these kids and give them something positive to focus on. So this is a performance that they did during our mural project. And they were just these really talented kids in the most difficult situation you could imagine, living on the streets at such a young age. And this is Alina, a young woman who had lived in the streets since she was a kid herself and continues to struggle as, as a young adult. And she was, the, she was the leader. The younger kids really looked up to her. She was so talented. She was so charismatic. And she became one of the stars of the mural. This is her as a clown, which is what she does as, as her art form. And this is something that's really special about public art and murals, is that you know these kids were able to define themselves and their own identity, right? Because society says you're, you're, you're a street person, you're a homeless person, you're poor, you're this. And Alina says, no, actually, I am a circus performer. Actually, I'm a clown, I'm an artist. This is who I am. And so through these murals, this is a way for people to define themselves, which is a very powerful tool to have. And so throughout the mural, they told all of the stories of their lives. And this was, these projects um, that are through Radisson, these are a way for hotel workers, through the hotels in these different communities, they can connect with the local youth in their community. Um, and so this, was a, this photo, this is from this year in St. Petersburg, Russia, where we had adults, positive adults in the community, who were partnering through the mural projects with these kids. And as you see from this picture, really forming these, these strong bonds, forming healthy relationships with them. And so I think this, this image just for me really, uh, you know, it shows what the potential of these public art projects are when the whole community gets involved. And for some of the teenagers, they were able to then go on to do internships and have job opportunities because of these projects. Another way to get the community engaged is by, is by partnering with, with uh, universities. So this is Richard Gomez, who many years ago was my roommate when I lived in California. And he's from the Central Valley in areas of California that are not glitzy and famous. They are the rural areas where you have a lot of migrant workers, um, you have a lot of immigrants and people who are working in agriculture. And so through, he's, a, he's an art professor there. So through Richard and some of the students, we had them connect with some of the kids in their community. And so I think that educational uh, institutions are a big part of this story because they're able to connect some of, the, some of the college kids, the professors, and some of the young people in the community to create public art. 
Um, so this was one that we did. This is just last year, this month. You know, imagine if you're Nathan and you are representing your entire community in the face of sometimes uh, very derisive language about immigrants and about people from your community and now you're representing yourself and your community as being strong and powerful and resilient. And this is Alex, who is also uh, a member of the community there, who's a local hero. And this was a way to really uh, pay respects to him within this youth mural. This year we also traveled to Australia, to the central desert, where there are many Aboriginal communities. Um, and we worked with many of the communities there. Uh, as Laura mentioned, we have two board members from there, and we have a deep connection with Australia. Um, and it was so amazing to go to these communities and see, you know, these are kids who are living in a place in one of the wealthiest countries on earth but living in some of the most desperate situations. And you just can't believe it when you go from a city like Melbourne or Sydney and go to the Central Desert and see how people are living there. Um, but you see that they are also so resilient. And they have amazing people like Gibson, who is a community leader, a community elder, and they really respect their elders. And the kids worked with some of the elders to tell their stories in murals like this one. You'll recognize yeah. Gibson in the mural. And I think for communities who have been told so often, your story doesn't matter, you don't, you're not worth anything, to be able to have your story in your community. These are in the town camps um, of Central Australia. And to say, you know, this is what we're all about. This is our identity. That's very, a very powerful thing in the face of oftentimes a really tragic oppression. So my wife CJ and I also spent some time um, last year in India, and we focused on many issues of gender inequality, including human trafficking and sex trafficking. And this was a woman who has survived uh, human trafficking. And I think that through public art, one of the most important things that you can do is talk about issues that are often taboo and issues that people don't want to talk about. And through the arts, it's often the only way. So sex trafficking is something that people would say, you know, this is something that we don't understand. And also, when these women are coming back into the community, they often face so much stigma. Because people say, oh, you, well, you were just a prostitute. And they don't understand what the reality of the situation is. So we had this mural, which was part of an entire event to raise awareness for human trafficking. And when you get close to the sari of that woman, you see all the stories of the local women there who had experienced this. And many of these women who were survivors were there and had a dance group. And they were performing for the community. Um, so this is CJ, my wife, here uh, with some of the kids in India. This was in a slum community in Delhi. And one thing that we do with Art Illusion is not only murals, but performance. And so CJ led the performance, and the kids were exploring issues of gender inequality, including street harassment. And it was just amazing to see these kids oftentimes, um, you know, even pre-adolescents or 13, 14-year-olds, and the boys would say, yeah, we, we do this thing called Eve teasing. Well, they explained what that was. It's basically harassment. And they said, yeah, we, that's what everyone does. And the girls explained what that feels like for them and how they feel, you know, how they feel in danger when they walk down the street. And, they, and it was the first time that many of these young people had actually listened to each other talk about this issue. And then they created entire, not just murals, but also performances about that. So here's one um, that explores this issue of harassment. And you'll see in it, one thing you have to know about, about India is that when people pull their ears like this, that means, I'm sorry. So I'll show you the video here. Thank you. 
So I think that performance kind of shows, you see the excitement of the kids and you see how excited they are to be able to share this message, not just talk about the problems such as harassment, but make their own performance about it and then perform for their families, their friends, and the community. Um, so this is, this is Max Frieder, who's the uh, co-director of Art Illusion that Laura mentions. And so he has started a program that we have in Art Illusion called the Foundstrument Soundstrument. So this was also in India in that same community. Um, and the kids, we all collected trash and found objects to reuse and become percussion instruments. And so everyone painted them and we had percussion workshops. And then what they do is create sculptures. This is a percussive sculpture that is in the Samos refugee camp in Greece um, that Max created with the kids. And we also earlier this year went to, both Max and I went to the D Dominican Republic to work with some kids in a, a very low income area that had a giant trash dump in the middle of the community. And so they took many of these, uh, these uh, trash, you know, basically durable trash and things made of metal and hard plastic and created uh, works of art with them and percussion instruments. And we joined together with three local artists, and that's something that's really a big, important part of Art Illusion, is always working with the local artists and have them co-facilitate the programs. And we would collect all these pieces of trash, paint them all, and then we created a mural that has within the mural this sculpture. It's a boat of trash going through this giant sea. And then the kids can actually play this boat we call it the boat instrument. So here's what that looks like. OK. Um, and so Art Illusion does principally murals, but we've really been able to expand that. And our thing is really any kind of art that's by the community and for the community, that's included within Art Illusion. Um, so one of our main projects, that uh, series of projects we did this year and that we'll continue to do next year, um, and this has actually been something that's been going on since 2013, is our work with Syrian refugees in Jordan. And so these are in, in Syrian refugee camps such as Zatari and Azraq, which are in very bleak desert environments across, right across the border from Syria where people have fled unimaginable tragedy and loss, had their family members killed, and then they suddenly find themselves as young Mohammed, who's only 14 years old here, he found himself in this refugee camp four years ago and he's escaped the war, but now he's stuck in this place that's extremely difficult. And so whenever we do these projects, we start out having conversations. And we start out with workshops. And we talk about the issues, we talk about the past, and we talk about the future. And all of the kids make drawings. So it may be hard to see his drawing, but on one side, there are airplanes dropping bombs on his community in Syria because that's what he experienced. And on the other side, he has some homes and a nice community with a dove for peace. And he said, this is my past and this is what I want my future to be. I don't want my future to be here. I want a new future. And so we'll bring together the ideas of all of these kids together within one cohesive design with the kids. We'll guide them through that process. And then the following day, we'll get out on the wall and we'll start painting with the whole community participating. And when it's finished, we have something like this. Um, and when you get close to this mural, you know, this is in the Zatri refugee camp on one of the big tents there, and you get close and you see that the children as well as the local artists there have created their memories from Syria and the things that they remem remember with fondness as well as many of the things that they dream of for the future. And so through this work, this is something that really brought these kids together. It gave them something positive to focus on. And also, they connected so much with some of those local artists that they were working with. 
And we even turn this, these broken down cars into works of art by using all kinds of trash and things that were, were found on the, on the street and painting them and creating this really fun contraption. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about connections. It's about relationships. And these relationships are built over the course of these projects. And to see the kid's reaction to that. You know, when you see a kid who's gone through so much and she looks like this, that's really what makes it all worth it. You know, you see that she is just really enjoying herself. She's expressing herself. And she's meeting people like Yusra, who's a local artist there, Yusra Ali. We also worked with a, an artist collective called the Jasmine Necklace Collective. And these are just some really amazing, fun guys who are refugees themselves living in Zatari refugee camp. Um, but they want to uplift their community and they want to work with the kids. And this is Mohammed Ibra oh, this is uh, Mohammed Johadar. And I worked with him on this uh, portrait in the middle of this mural. And that's one of my favorite things about these projects. I love working with the kids, and I also love working with these local artists. And you see that they have so much passion and so much talent, and I enjoy fully getting to know them. And one of the big and most important parts about Art Illusion is that we're working not just with them when we're physically there, but supporting them to be able to continue this work year round and have sustainable projects going on in the refugee camps, which in the end will be much more impactful than just doing one project here and one project there because it will impact the lives of thousands of kids throughout the entire year. And this was one of my favorite artists, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim. And he's in the Azraq refugee camp, and he will be leading our programs there with the other artists. And he said to us, you know, I, in Syria, had times when I couldn't even feed my children. Imagine what that feels like. And I fled, and now I feel like, you know, I was an artist, I had a life, I had a career, and now I have nothing, and I'm just stuck in this camp. And I just want to create art, and I want to work with the community, and I want to do something positive because otherwise I'm just gonna sink into depression. And so, you know, we often talk about what these projects do for the kids, but also they're so important for guys like, like Mohammed Ibrahim. And to see him working with the kids, this is him working with some of the girls there on one of the murals, and he's such a warm spirit. And so we really believe so strongly in supporting people like him to be able to do this important work in his community there. And we've been in touch with him since then, and he has been able to continue. He sends us these pictures on WhatsApp, okay, look what I did today, um, using some of the resources from our project this summer and continuing to do programs with the youth there. And we also worked bringing together some of the Syrian refugee kids with some of the local kids in Jordan. And this is something we'll be doing this year, both in Jordan and Lebanon, bringing kids together that are local with some of the refugees who often have a lot of friction between these communities. And art is such an, a great way to bring people together. So you see this giant mural, you see them all on the top. This is in a girls' school in Amman, um, bringing those two communities together. And when you look closely, they wanted to show the diversity of their communities. And this is one of the things I love about painting with kids, is to just see, like, why did you paint that guy's eye like that? Like, it's just, I would never have thought to do that, but it's so cool. So that's something that I really enjoy, and, you know, she did these portraits of us. This was a portrait of Max. <laughs> so, it does kind of look like him a little bit. Um, and so, yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of the projects. Um, one example of that was in Johannesburg last year, Johannesburg, South Africa, working on an orphanage. And so within this orphanage, we worked with some of these amazing kids there who lived there and created a giant mural on the side of their entire uh, orphanage. And one area of the mural here in the middle, we said, okay, we're gonna paint people who are important to you, who support you in your life. So they painted their teachers and they painted their, you know, their friends and, and staff members at the orphanage. And one kid painted this. I said, oh, who's that? He said, President Jacob Zuma. And I said, oh, cool, great. I'm like, why did you paint his head like a giant peanut? You know, and the kid is just like, that's what his head looks like. <laughs> and I'm, 
Is it? Okay, I have seen pictures of President Jacob Zoom. I don't know if that's what his head looks like. But great, that's very creative. I don't think anybody's going to know who that is. One minute later, this man's walking down the street. Oh, President Jacob Zuma. <laughs> I'm like, how did you know that his head? I was like, what? And then all week, people were coming by, and, they were, and I couldn't figure it out. And I had to go back and look at a picture of President Jacob Zuma. And I'm like, his head is kind of like a peanut, you know? So I just think sometimes these kids, they see things that we don't see. <laughs> Um, so, coming up this year, one of, one of the things we're really excited about is to be able to head back to the Middle East to work not only with the Syrian refugees, but bringing together Israelis and Palestinians, which is something that, you know, this has been a conflict going on throughout, you know, so many generations now, and we've done these projects on many occasions, and we're going to be going back this summer, not only to work with the kids, but with Israeli and Palestinian artists and bringing them together so they can continue that work bringing the kids together. Um, and so this has been something that's been such an amazing experience to see these kids coming together, to paint, to get to know one another. And you see these images like this. This was this moment with this, with this you know, girl who uh, is, is a religious Muslim girl from a religious Muslim family and a Hasidic, ultra-Orthodox Jewish boy who they do not ever, ever mix, ever. And for this moment to happen, and we said, wow, you guys are painting together, you're hanging out, let's take a picture of you. And she puts her arm around him. And, and, and that, this image, we're not even allowed to put this online because their families will not allow it. This is like not something that's supposed to happen. And it's something that can happen with kids and with young people when they get to know each other. And people do not have to agree. But to see each other as human beings and to see that there are things that we all have in common is the start to planting seeds that can create change in the future. And so that's what the projects that we're going to be doing this year are going to be about um, in that region. And we're really looking forward to seeing you know, what the results of that are and continuing to support those local artists to work with kids like this um, to start building bridges and to start on this road towards reconciliation. Um, so I'm going to close by some quotes from some of the kids. Um, so this is from a project several years ago in 2013 with kids in Kibera, slum community in Nairobi, Kenya. And some members of this community actually supported that project to happen. And it was right before the presidential election. And the previous presi presidential election, there had been a, an eruption of violence and rioting and ethnic and political based killings. And so now it was about to be the next election. So for the two months leading up to the election, the kids created a whole series of works of public art and murals about bringing ethnic groups together in peace and about not having violence for the election and about unity. And what I want you to pay attention to with these quotes is that the kids have had a transformation in the way that they think about themselves. As you will hear them saying, you'll notice that they are now describing themselves as agents of social change. And that's what these projects are about. It's about taking kids from the most desperate slum or, or refugee camps, communities, and having them start out thinking, you know, all these bad things are happening, but I can't do anything about it. I'm a victim of my circumstances. And then transforming into someone that says, you know what, I can actually make a change. I actually can be a person that can affect my community. And so here are some of their quotes. This is from a... Uh, a documentary that's much longer, but it's just a couple of quotes uh, from that. In 2007, when you were in South Africa, especially you were told, when you were in Kuala Lumpur, you were in Kuala Yes, 
kwa ukuta tukiziandika yani wana na feel hamtoi kwa sababu kama andika hapo mesha elimisha watu wengi kitu mzuri alifanya mbaguo kabila sababu kibakuwa inaweza kuwa vita vita mingi sana kibakuwa kabila picha ni kwamba kwa kwa ukuta ili kujisaidia sisi kama kabila tuishi pamoja kumlea 